we discussed that how enzyme assisted extraction enhances the extraction efficiency by disrupting the cell wall either by hydrolysis of the cell wall components and thereby allowing the entrance of the solvent into the cell and solubilization of intercellular components thereby increasing the extraction efficiency. But the enzyme based extractions they largely depends upon the certain properties of enzymes such as specificity. We know that enzymes are nothing but they are protein molecules and they have specific effect or they act specifically against specific substrates. So, there are certain enzymes that will act only on cellulose substrate, there are certain enzymes that will act only on pectin substrates. So, we cannot, we will not see that a pectinase that will hydrolyze a cellulase. So, in, in simple words, enzymes are highly specific. So, in order to get maximum benefit of such kind of technique, we have to select an enzyme after studying the cell wall characteristic of the sample. Then enzymes are also regio selective and this regional selectivity will depend upon their specificity. So, if an enzyme is a cellulase, so again cellulase it means it will act on cellulose only or cellulosic components only. So, if a region in the plant cell wall does not have cellulosic components, such enzyme will not act on that particular region. So, specificity leads to their regional selectivity. Then the efficiency of enzyme assisted extraction also depends upon the ability of the enzymes to conduct or to hydrolyze the cell walls under mild conditions. Why mild conditions are important? Because if we are using extreme conditions for the enzymatic actions, and these extreme conditions could be of pH or temperature or in enzyme concentration, then such conditions may also lead to the degradation of these bioactive compounds, which we are extracting out of the plant cells. So, in order to extract out components without altering their chemistry, without altering their properties, we have to select enzymes that can act under mild conditions in order to retain the original chemistry of the compounds we want to extract from the plants. There are different types of enzymes that are used in this process. We discussed that cell wall has different components cellulose is there, hemicelluloses are there, pectins are there, lignin is there, proteins are there. So, we use different types of enzymes because enzymes are specific. We use celluloses to hydrolyze cellulosic components. We use hemicellulases to hydrolyze hemicellulose. We use pectinases to hydrolyze pectin components. We use proteases to, to uh, hydrolyze the protein, structural proteins that are present in the cell walls. And many a times it has been observed that using the mixture of different enzymes, mixture of celluloses with hemicelluloses or celluloses with pectinases has shown better results and nowadays you will see commercially cocktails of different enzymes are available, which we are going to discuss when we will discuss the effect of type of enzyme on the extraction process. So, here we will discuss about different types of enzymes. So, coming on first to cellulases. Now, as the name indicate and as I told you that these enzymes largely act upon cellulose that is present in the cell wall. And cellulases is nothing but an umbrella term which constitute three different types of enzymes. And these three types are endogluconases, example is endo 14 beta d gluconase enzyme, then exo exoglucanases and examples are cellobiohydrolases, this is a class of uh, exoglucanase and under cellobiohydrolase uh, example of enzyme is 1,4 beta d glucan cellobiohydrolase enzyme. Then the third type of cellulase is beta glucosidases and cellobiase is a class of beta glucosidase and example of cellobiase enzyme is beta d 
glucoside glucohydrolase enzyme now as the name endoglucanase indicates it hydrolyzes the internal 1,4 glycosidic bonds present inside the cellulose structure now once these internal 1,4 glycosidic bonds are hydrolyzed or are broken by endoglucanase certain oligosaccharides of cellulose are released now these oligosaccharides once they are released these are acted upon by the exogluconases or cellobiohydrolase enzymes now these enzymes they further hydrolyze these cello oligosaccharides that are released after hydrolysis of the cellulose crystal or the cellulose structure this enzyme exogluconases after hydrolyzing oligosaccharides they give rise to certain disaccharide structures which we call them as cellobios now these disaccharide structures or cellobios are further acted upon by beta glucosidases which is the third type of cellulose enzyme now these beta glucosidases they further hydrolyze cellobios and they give rise to glucose molecules which is the monomeric unit of a cellulose so this is how cellulase enzyme they hydrolyze the cellulose in this image you can clearly see the action of three types of celluloses first one is the structure of cellulose and it is acted upon by the endoglucanases which break down the internal 1,4 glycosidic bonds giving rise to certain cellulosic oligosaccharides now these oligosaccharides are then acted upon by exogluconases giving rise to disaccharide structures cellobios and finally the cellobios are acted upon by beta glucosidases giving rise to monomer structures of glucose now cellulases are produced commercially by fermentation of different microorganisms specifically fungi and bacteria and fungi belonging to genus of trichoderma asparagus penicillin and uh, pleurotus all these fungi are used commercially and amongst these trichoderma raci is the most widely used species of the fungi uh, that is used to produce large amount of cellulose and among different bacteria bacillus pumilus bacillus mycoides and bacillus cereus are largely used uh, to produce the cellulose enzyme after fermentation process these enzymes have wide variety of uses in different types of industry they are used for the treatment of waste water wherein they hydrolyze the cellulosic structures that are present in the water they are also used in bakery industry in order to improve the rheological properties of the dough and these properties are improved by hydrolysis of the cellulosic structures that are present in the wheat or the grains then it is also used in textile industry wherein it helps in improving the smoothness of the fibers of that fabric vis-a-vis it also helps in reducing the pilling effect of the fiber cellulases are also used in brewing industry wherein they help in enhancing the extraction from the malt they improve the filtrability of the beer by reducing the viscosity it is also used in paper industry wherein it digest the cellulosic material thereby giving you a good paper pulp which helps in producing better paper it is widely used in food industry wherein it is used to extract out juices from uh, the plant material it is also used to extract out oil from different types of fruits as well as seeds celluloses are also used in wine industry in order to extract out poly uh, polyphenolic compounds from the peels of the grapes vis-a-vis it also helps in extracting out color colorants from uh, the grapes thereby improving the color as well as the taste of the wine and last but not the least celluloses are also used in the production of bioethanol wherein they they are incubated with biomass 
causing hydrolysis of cellulose thereby producing the final monomer that is glucose which is used in fermentation to produce ethanol. Now we move on to the second class of enzymes that is hemicellulases. Now again hemicellulases are the enzyme which are responsible for the hydrolysis of the hemicellulosic components present in the cell wall and like cellulases these are group of different types of enzyme or hemicellulases is an umbrella term that encompasses different types of enzymes like xylanases, manases, uh, arabinofuranosidases, glucouranidases, galactosidases, acetyl and furyloyl esterases. Coming on to xylanases, as their name indicates, these enzymes largely act upon the hemicellulose molecules that are rich in xylan units or xylan monomers. These are of two types, endoxylanases and xylosidases. So, endoxylanases, they hydrolyze the 1,4 beta linkage of uh, the polysaccharide, thereby releasing small amounts of xylo oligosaccharides. We know that hemicellulose is nothing but it is a uh, heteropolysaccharide which is made up of different uh, uh, monomer units and xylan if it is present then it will be acted upon by xylanases. So, the 1,4 bonds beta 1,4 bonds of xylan monomers are hydrolyzed by endoxylanases thereby releasing xylo oligosaccharides. Now, these xylo oligosaccharides are further acted upon by the second type of xylanases that is xylosidases which further break down these oligosaccharides leading to the formation or release of the monomeric unit that is xylose. So, this is how xylanases act on hemicellulosic units. Second type of hemicellulase is manase. So, as their name indicate they will act upon the hemicellulose molecules that are rich in manan units. Again there are two types of manases beta mananase and beta manosidase. Beta mananase again they will hydrolyze the endo 1,4 beta linkage and the example of the enzyme is endo 1,4 beta manase or also known as 1,4 beta D manan manohydrolase. So, this enzyme basically decompose the manan rich hemicellulose molecules to release oligomers of manan. Again these oligomers are acted upon by the second class of enzyme that is beta manosidase and thereby release the monomers which are known as manose. Third type of enzyme under hemicellulosis is alpha L furanosidase. Now this enzyme is largely considered as a debranching enzymes, uh, debranching enzyme because it is responsible for the cleavage of the side chains or the substitutes that are attached on the side of the chain and such substitutes are attached with the help of alpha 1, 2 or alpha 1, 3 linked arabinofurinase sugars or in simple words if we say this enzyme is responsible for the breakage of the side chains. So, as you can see uh, in the structure below there are certain uh, blue structures in the side uh, in the entire chain there are certain red color structures are shown in the chain. Now, these blue colored structures are nothing but these are the glucouronic acid residues. Now, these residues are acted upon by the third set of enzyme which is known as alpha D glucouronidase enzyme. Now, this enzyme is responsible for the cleavage of alpha 1, 2 bonds between the main chain of the hemicellulose that is glucouronoxylan chain and the glucouronic acid that are represented in the blue colored structures. So, this enzyme is responsible for the breakage of the these glucouronic acid that are present in the side chain. So, again it is a sort of debranching enzyme. The fourth class under hemicellulosis is acetyl xylan esterase enzyme. 
So, as the name indicate acetyl xylan esterase, this enzyme is responsible for the hydrolysis of the esteric or the esters that are present in the chain. So, again you can see I told you previously also there are certain uh, structures in the uh, in the hemicellulose chain indicated by the red color. These are the esteric bonds that are present in the uh, hemicellulose chain. So, this enzyme is responsible for the removal of the acetyl group from this chain thereby an, and is also responsible for enhancing the activity of xylanase enzyme. Then the fifth type of hemicellulase is the galactohydrolase. This enzyme hydrolyzes alpha 1 6 bonds from the backbone hemicellulase chain and releases the alpha 1 6 linked D galactopyranocyl substituents. And the most common example of this enzyme is alpha 1 D galactoside galactohydrolase enzyme. And the last one is the phenolic acid esterase. Now, as the name indicate, it hydrolyzes the ester bonds that are present between the sugar and between the certain lignin components like ferulic acids. So, examples are ferulyl esterase which break down the bonds between ferulic acid and arabinose. We also have, have paracumeryl esterase which break down bond between cumeric acid and arabinose. So, these are the various enzymes that fall under the hemicellulose category. So, here you can see the structure of a hemicellulose chain and you can see different enzymes under hemicellulases, they act at different positions because hemicellulose is a heteropolymer, uh, heteropolysaccharide, it is also having side chains or the branches also. So, there are in this figure you can clearly see different components of hemicellulases, different types of hemicelluloses hydrolyzing different types of bonds that are present in a hemicellulose chain. Now, like celluloses, hemicelluloses are also produced with the help of microorganisms and largely fungi and bacteria are used as source for their commercial production. Fungi belonging to the genus of Asparagillus and Trichoderma are widely used and uh, bacteria Bacillus is the major uh, species. Bacillus species are largely used for the production of hemicellulose at commercial scale. Now, we move on to the third type of enzyme that is pectinases. As their name indicate pectinases, they are responsible for the degradation of pectic substances. Now, pectins are again, they are uh, heteropolysaccharide. So, therefore, pectinases are again complex heterogeneous group of enzymes like uh, cellulases and hemicelluloses. And again, these uh, pectinases are produced with the help of various kinds of bacteria and fungi if you are, if you want to produce these enzymes at commercial scale. Depending upon their action, we can categorize pectinases into protopectinase, depolymerizing pectinases and pectin esterases. Now, protopectinases as we are going to discuss ahead also, uh, these are the enzymes, these are the first enzymes that are required to hydrolyze pectin. Then depolymerizing enzymes are responsible for hydrolyzing the pectin chains, either they hydrolyze the chain or they cleave the chain. So, depending upon their mechanism, we have hydrolyzing pectinases and we also have cleaving pectinases and pectin esterase are the enzymes that are responsible for breakdown of the ester bonds that are present in the pectin molecule. So, coming on to protopectinase or pectino, pectinosinase enzymes. Now, these enzymes are largely found in the unripe fruits and therefore, they convert insoluble protopectin into the soluble form of pectin. And therefore, such enzymes protopectinases are also largely used in food in industry in order to release juices from the fruits. Now, as I told you, it is the first enzyme that initiates the degradation of pectin because it converts protopectin into soluble form of pectin. Second is the pectin esterase. 
or the pectin methyl or acetyl esterases. So, once the pectin gets converted into soluble form of pectin, these enzymes come into action and they catalyze the deesterification of methyl ester linkage of galactouron backbone of pectin to giving rise to pectic acid and methanol. Now, these enzymes have largely been found in uh, the fruits, leaves, flower, stem and roots of the higher plants. Now, once this deesterification occurs, the resultant product products that are obtained, they are further acted upon by depolymerizing pectinases and I remind you that depolymerizing pectinases can be of hydrolyzing type as well as of the cleaving type of pectinases. So, coming on to hydrolyzing enzymes and the most common examples are polygalactouronase and polymethylgalactouronase enzyme. Now, as the name indicates, these enzymes hydrolyze the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds in presence of water. So, they cause hydrolysis of these bonds in presence of water to produce polygalactouronate and polymethylgalactouronate. Second category is of the cleaving enzymes which include pectin transaminase or transaliminase enzymes and the most common example is polygalactouronate lyase and polymethylgalactouronate lyase enzyme. As these are the cleaving enzymes, so they do not cause hydrolysis, but they cleave the pectin through 1,4 glycosidic linkage, thereby causing a transelimination reaction producing unsaturated galactouronates. Now, we move on to the applications of these pectinases. Now, pectinase as we discussed, these are largely found in the unripe fruits where they start the hydrolysis of the pectin. So, therefore, such enzymes are largely used in food industry to extract out juices from the fruit. These are also used in wine industry to enhance the taste and color of the wine. Since these enzymes will help in extracting out the polyphenolic compounds as well as color from the fruit uh, coverings or the fruit coatings, they will help in enhancing the taste as well as the color of the wine. They help in enhancing the fermentation rate of the tea in tea industry and therefore, uh, they are largely used in tea industry. These are also used to remove mucilage covering from the coffee beans. So, in order to further roasting, help in roasting of the coffee beans. In pharmaceutical industry, pectinases are used to digest the dietary fibers in order to produce further probiotic uh, products and we know that pre and probiotics are essential for uh, our immune system. Therefore, we can say that pectinases since they help in the digestion of uh, digestive uh, dietary fibers, they also help in improving the immunity of our body. They also help in increasing the extraction yields by hydrolyzing or cleaving the pectin components present in the cell wall. They also help in preparation of the controlled release formulations in the pharmaceutical industry. The last class is of proteinases and these enzymes as their name indicate help in the breakage of structural proteins present in the cell wall. Different types of proteolytic enzymes that are being used, these include aspartic or aspartyl peptidase, cysteine peptidase, serine peptidase, metallopeptidases, threonine peptidase, glutamic peptidase and asparginine peptidase peptide lyase. Now, here you can see the effect of peptidase uh, or the protease enzyme on the cell wall. The first image shows the normal cell wall and the second image or the B image shows the magnified view of that cell wall and the image C and D shows the cell wall after it was incubated with the protease enzyme. So, you can completely see the disruption of the cell wall in the magnified D image and the lacunas are formed in the cell walls which allow the entry of the solvent into the cell and helps in solubilizing of the cellular components. So, this is another example how the enzymes help in overall enhancing the extraction efficiency of a process. 
So friends, in the next lecture, we will continue with the steps involved in the enzyme assisted extraction, factors that are effect that will affect the extraction efficiency and we will also discuss about the applications of this process. Thank you.